Howdy folks, John here. Welcome to part two of the R2-D2 AstroPixels update. In part one, I covered the basics of the AstroPixels R2 dome light kit, and in today's video, we'll be getting them installed in R2. Let's get started. Step one, off with his head. <laughs> Step two, removing all the TC's lights and wiring. To bezel or not to bezel? That is the question we're dealing with now. I think with these AstroPixels, you pretty much have to put a bezel over top of them. The white NeoPixel Nanos, they just distract too much. And in my opinion, it looks a whole lot better once you place a bezel over top of them. I just 3D printed my bezels. These files were on uh, Darren's AstroPixel page. Again, link will be in the description, but they're the same as the Badly ones as well, if you've already printed some of those out. Originally, I think these are three millimeters thick. I didn't think that would work and it didn't look right because you're essentially looking through a long little tunnel for each hole. And if your logics are off angle at all, the LEDs will just disappear because they're so deep and set back in the uh, holes. So I've made mine one millimeter thick. I just lowered these in my slicer program and I think that will work a whole lot better. You can see the LEDs even if they're held at quite a sharp angle. And then I just uh, sprayed the one side with flat black spray paint just to give them a nice dull even appearance. And I also printed out some little one millimeter spacers. I made these on Tinkercad and I've glued them on the back side of all the bezels and this is just to lift the bezel one millimeter off of the PCB board so when I screw this on the bezel isn't being pressed hard against the uh, NeoPixel Nanos which I didn't think would be a good idea so this just lifts the uh, bezel just enough off the board to uh, clear all those little chips. And for anyone who watched my uh, TC's light video from way back when I was doing my TC's lights for the R2 build, you know I used these little diffusers in my logic surrounds. I think it gives it a nice diffused look. You probably wouldn't have to use something like this, but I just think it's better to have all those little holes protected. Crap will get in them and whatnot. So you could either use a slightly diffused one like these are or just a clear plastic uh, protector. Yeah, so before installing the AstroPixels into R2 here, I thought while both sets were out, we could do a little quick comparison between the two. So here are the TCs. You can see they are quite a bit brighter than the AstroPixels. I've just got one of those little diffuser lenses in front of one of these just to show you what it looks like with the diffuser lens over not having a diffuser lens. Just makes them look a little more fuzzy, kind of like the fiber optics, but totally your call. I made a few mistakes on that first video. I think I called these things nanopixels. They're actually called neopixels. That's the trade name by Adafruit. That's who makes these little chip sets. And uh, the little tiny ones are 2020 chips, meaning they're two millimeter by two millimeter square. So they're called a neopixel nano. Uh, the big ones are 50-50 chips, 5 millimeter by 5 millimeter. I think they also have a 35-35 chip and even just regular through hole 5 millimeter LEDs. But uh, they're Adafruit products, all called uh, NeoPixels. And you can actually drive them brighter. There's code, there's a write-up on GitHub using the Real2 library code, how to actually drive them brighter if you found them too, uh, too dim. Certainly never going to get to the same brightness level as a clear high output three millimeter LED. Uh, my concern, of course, driving any LED brighter is you're shortening its lifespan. And uh, there's a fairly good thorough write-up on uh, Adafruit's website on their NeoPixel page 
how they work and everything. I'll link to it below in the description and it talks about lifespan in there. And the other thing with the uh, PSI is on the Astro Pixels, not quite as bright as the TCs, but there are more LEDs. These, uh, because the LEDs are specific colors, you know, only half of them are lit up at one time, either the green or the yellow, whereas these, because they can change color, uh, all of them can be lit up. And they're a little more diffused as well. If you notice when I removed the PSI lights in R2's dome, I had a film, a diffuser film over these, plus the diffuser plate on the front of the PSI. Without that second film on these, you could see all the individual dots. Some people like that look, I didn't. Uh, probably not gonna have that problem with these. Uh, I'm not gonna bother with another diffuser over top of these. Both are nice light sets. Get what works best for you. Step three, installing the Astro Pixels. So they fit really nice. Oops. Gotta put in my little diffuser lens first. There we go. As I said, fit really nice. Screw holes line up well. I'm actually only going to use two screws in each one on corner to corner. Don't feel you need to put all four in, but that's your call. PSI likewise fits in like a glove. Note I have marked the vertical on these so I know which way is up and down so the lights are going in the right direction. I've got the ESP32 control board mounted. I basically mounted it in the same section as where the original TC's uh, rear logic and control board was because it's right close to my DC-DC buck converter or voltage regulator, if you want to call it that. If you're wondering what uh, buck converter you to use with these, there's so many out there. The little LM2596 is a very popular one that I've had good results with. It's good up to three amps, so fine for uh, the Astro Pixels here. Why is this bugger not focusing? There we go. And it's got a little adjustable pot so you can adjust the output voltage. Good up to 24 volts input voltage and that's why I've got a slightly different one on mine because I run my R2 off of 6S LiPos so it's actually over 24 volts. This would probably be fine the little LM2596 but this one's good up to 32 volts so just a little bit higher. Basically the same thing though. So let's get our Astro Pixels in. I don't know why I had my uh, rear logic the end here is shaved off. I think it was for the TC's lights. But as it turns out, it makes fitting this really easy as well. Slides right in there. And then the uh, PSI here. Again, good fit. So, just got to get it all wired up now. Wiring the Astro Pixels is super easy. Should mention Darren gives lots of servo leads. Granted, I don't have any of my uh, hollow projectors hooked up because I'm running them on a switched output from my radio so I can turn them on and off independently and they're those high output Cree LEDs. But lots of uh, servo harnesses to do the job. Went in really nice. Oh, you may know I've put a input power cap on my um, ESP32 board. It's 2200 microfarads. Don't have to do that. I just often put caps in just to keep this voltage smooth. And then we've just got the uh, wiring coming along and came along. One input going to the front logics and then the other to the PSI. Let's get this dome on R2 and see how he looks. Yo R2, come model your new lights. (laughs) 
So really happy with the logics. They just dance around so analog. The PSI is very bright, no issue with it. However, you don't see the line, at least with the diffuser in my R2. Uh, when it goes half blue, half red, it actually turns anywhere between a bluey mauve color to a pink color, depending on what the ratio of red to blue is. But it is very bright. And for indoors, no problem with these uh, Astro Pixels. And there's the rear ones. Let's bring this just a little closer. And again, rear PSI. Camera is not picking up the colors correctly. The yellow is nicer than the uh, TC's yellow. It's definitely yellow. Uh, the TC's was kind of an orange. Again, through my diffuser. Just quickly showing a comparison between the TC's in the top left corner here and the Astro Pixels, so you can get an idea of the differences and what they look like. Keep in mind the PSI colors aren't rendering quite correctly, but uh, it'll give you an idea. Thanks again, Darren, for making the Astro Pixels available at such a low cost for anyone who wants them. Now that I've got them installed, fit exactly like the TC's lights, maybe even a little bit better because they actually fit into the surrounds. They don't uh, sit over top of them like the TC's did. And just a fantastic look. Actually, I'm gonna zoom right in on those. So that is the R2 update video with the Astro Pixels. I know I kept saying I was eventually going to weather this guy. And you know what? I've come close several times, but I just can't bring myself to do it. So maybe if I say it in a video and enough people say they want to see a weathering video, it'll give me motivation to get to it. It's been almost two years. And yeah, I still haven't weathered them, but I've got all the paint. I've had it for over a year and a half. Just can't come to uh, dirtying them up. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. And until next time, happy Astro Pixel Light install.